Ooh, not a beautiful day. In a recent ski tutorial, we talked a lot about feet and how they're incredibly important because a turn starts from the feet. It's all about the feelings and sensations when you're skiing. That's what we live for. This video is a little bit similar, but we're going to move up the chain to the hip. Reading the size of my body. Let's talk about hips, guys, and how they can make you ski a whole lot better. Because even if you do things right with the feet, maybe you do weird things with the hip where you're back seated or putting in weird places. So in this video, we're going to learn a few strategies to use the hip so that we can carve really nicely. Like a wise old ski instructor once told me, that you can think of the four aft balance like a zone underneath your ski. Green for good and red for bad. And um, in every carved turn, you kind of want to think of it like the hip is going a little bit forward to the top third of the turn, to be a little bit forward, and then to the middle of the turn, in the middle, and to the end of the turn, you might want to absorb a little bit, let the legs come up a wee bit, and that movement makes it a little bit more closer to the red in the back. I can see in the comment sections below that I'm confusing you if I'm not telling you this. In the foot video, we're talking about engaging the feet to guide balance, right? And by pressing down a big toe, you're going to get way better balance. If we would do the following, that we push the toes down, because we want to have four pressure, we're going to push our hip back like that. And that's not really what we want to do. That's why we have to think about the hip as well as the feet. So the hip moves forward, and you just gently have some pressure down on the toes, so you feel engaged and in contact with the ski. And this way we can do some nice carb turns. Drill one, we're gonna learn the interplay between the feet and the hip. In that transition, it's okay to let those knees come up so the hip is back towards the red, because we're not trying to put pressure on the skis here. We just wanna move into the next turn. And then one third in, you want that hip to come crushing down with four pressure onto the shins in your boot and your toes. Think of the toes to just resist that pressure, that you're not overdoing it. And as you move towards the apex of the turn, stand on the whole foot in the green with the hip. And then as you release the turn and move towards the transition, let those knees come up again, making that hip being a bit on the red again, and enjoy the next turn. It's a good idea to try to make rather large turns so you have time to find that four off and feel with the foot, resist the pressure on the hip and the body weight. Consider joining one of our ski camp straddles and push your skiing to the next level. <laughs> Saved it. Definitely meant that. The worm turn, with it you can save any fail. Key is just to hold up your feet a little bit from the snow, tails up, roll over, and you can make your uh, crash. Yeah, into a trick. And if you're better at using the hip, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> if you're watching this video and you can't carve cleanly yet, and you see this drill and you think, great, I'm gonna do this and move the hip forward more. Don't do that. Because if you can't carve properly, this is a common mistake that people have actually been taught well by ski instructors to really move forward in between turns. If you think about it, have less weight on the tails. To the extreme, you'd lift the tails up and then they are skidding. Drill hip to the inside to increase edge angles. Feet are finding the edge, hip inside. Bam! Next way you can use your hip for balance is side to side balance. And you can instead think of the hip to move you on the inside than the feet doing it. Hip really far inside, really think an arrow out there. Now when doing nice swooping calf turns, you always want to start with your feet rolling onto the edge with the knees so that you can feel that you're carving cleanly. And then we want to move that hip to the inside of the turn. So long swooping turns and a rubber band getting the hip to the inside. Here. There's kind of two ways you can get the hip to the inside of the turn. Inclining and angulating. And I like to think of this as kind of one movement where we kind of just tip in and then crank it in. 
and then you want to dare to trust those edges. That's easy to say. Maybe that's good advice, but for some other world. Well, my friend, just believe in yourself. Unless you're on blunt park skis, then probably you cannot trust those edges to save you from falling over. But if you're on the proper skis, just trust in them that you can lay it over. Hip pedaling, hip pedaling, hip pedaling. <laughs> Oops. Oh, I should talk some more. Uh, so, for my own skiing, this has been one of the most important things I've learned in the last few years. Really thinking about what the hip is doing and that pedaling motion that we ski instructors like to talk about, like pressing down on the feet, go from one foot to the next one. It's even more powerful, I would say, if you think about it as the hip pressing down on that outside ski, going into the next turn, pressing down on the new outside ski. Stationary hip pedaling drill. You start out like this, just sit and try to like press down on one side so the other side of the hip gets lifted up. Try that a few times. And then you can incorporate the legs as well to simulate a carb turn. It's gonna look a little silly, but something like this, you're pressing down on the outside leg and then as the skis come across, flattens, and then press down on the other hip and leg. Try that a few times, and then take it to the snow. Hip pedaling while skiing. I suggest you do, also here, quite long swooping calf turns to make it a bit easier, just like this. Ah, that was a rough start. Down, and then on the new one, down. You obviously can't see what I'm doing really while skiing, but I didn't see it. I could really feel that I was doing it at least. Drill three on the hip pedaling. To do it on both sides. So down on the outside and up on the inside for even more pressure on the outside ski. So I'm like thinking like that. Ah, it's kind of like this with my hands on my hips. Bam. And you probably notice that this is quite a powerful drill to get both more weight on the outside ski and as you unweight in the inside ski too, you're gonna get some higher edge angles. When you're doing the hip pedaling, especially when you think about down on the outside and up on the inside, that you might turn into the angulator that I mentioned last season in a video. Angulator. I used to be one of those, where you basically just angulate straight away and forget to first incline a little bit into the turn and then do the hip pedaling and angulate a wee bit. Since you're the kind of person who's learning alone from a video, it's important that you collect some data and feedback so that you can improve. The first level of feedback is while you're turning, ask yourself, am I doing it right? Or you can use something like car and then you get some feedback of say, pressure after every single turn. 60, 63, 61, 65. And then after a section of slope, relive the experience in the theater of your own mind and feel why wasn't it going the way I wanted it to be. Make a plan. Go slower, faster, make the turns maybe a little bit larger so that you have time to do these maneuvers. Or you can listen to Cobb and get some feedback on how your skiing went. Think of outside ski pressure as the foundation of your skiing upon which you can build up the rest of your technique. Look at that. That hip is definitely growing inside of the turn a bit there. But to do it better, I think it could have even more pressure or like hip pedal a bit more. Maybe lift the inside hip a bit too to get a bit more outside ski pressure. Best score, 149. What I think is missing is this edge angle. I think I need a bit steeper run so I can lay it down even further. Hips in the direction of travel. It's quite common that you see people skiing around doing kind of weird calves, a little bit like this. Often a ski goes off, diverging, not carving cleanly. And therefore it's important to learn that the skis are turning us. We are not turning the skis. Therefore the hips should just point straight forward. All right, drill, let the skis turn you. Hold the hips, 
Now hold the poles by your hips and let the skis gently carve you around, not the other way around. It's so, it's so good. Try that for a whole run or three maybe. And by the end of it, I suggest you have a friend film you to see if you're actually managing to pull it off as well as you think you are. And if you're not doing it as well as you think you are, then I have another drill for you. So if you still get an outward rotating hip, we need to add a little bit of movement to undo this. First of all, tighten the core. And then as you go into a new turn, like we moved the weight forward earlier in this video, need you to just have a little bit of like forward momentum, pressing down and forward on that outside ski. Let's try it for a bit. So this hip now, like a little bit forward and down. Forward and down. You probably can't see anything. I'm just trying to follow the skis around the arc. Oh, feels good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I will take it to practice. And if you want to practice more skiing, maybe join one of our ski technique camps for adults or check out another video. All the best and see you in the next one. Ciao.